This is help supervision. Uh, so this is when we see kids at well visits or well screenings. Uh, every time we see them, we're going to get a, a health history. We're going to do a physical assessment. We're going to look at their developmental level. Are they meeting the developmental uh, milestones for their age? We're going to do sensory screening, which is vision and hearing screening. We're going to look at at risk, what they are at risk for. We're going to check their immunizations and make sure they're up to date, give them ones if needed, and then talk about health promotion uh, for the developmental stage they're in. Uh, so here's some things we do want uh, from that developmental stage assessment. At any stage, um, we are worried if they don't respond to us or if they're always walking, standing on their toes three months, um, they shouldn't be able to roll over yet. That is kind of a concerning sign if they are rolling over. Uh, at two to three months, they should have stopped fisting. They should be starting to open their hands. And if they're not, that's a, a bad neurologic sign. Um, by four months, they should have gotten rid of head leg. And if it's still there, that's a bad sign. By five months, they should be reaching for toys. We're concerned if they're not. Um, six months, they should be able to tripod sit. So that's not, they're not, don't have to be steady yet, but sitting, uh, using their hands as well as their legs. If they're not smiling, those infant reflex, or reflexes should be gone, um, usually about four months, depending on the which one? Three to four months. Babinski's an exception. It lasts longer. But the others should be gone. And if they're not, we're worried. If the child's not babbling at six months, we're worried. At nine months, if they're not making reciprocal vocalizations. So um, it sounds like speech. Right? It has the cadence and the inflection, but it doesn't necessarily have words. Uh, Twelve months, they should be able to use a spoon and hold a crayon. We're concerned if they can't. By 15 to 18 months, everyone should be walking and using real words, and we're concerned if they're not. More warning signs. Um, the hand dominance shouldn't be obvious until they're over 18 months. And if they are using just one side, we're concerned maybe they're CP or something that's um, preventing them from using the other side. Uh, by 18 months, again, we said they should be walking, they should be speaking. Um, not lots of words, and only the family's going to understand them, but they should have words with meaning. Uh, if by 18 months, they, their receptive language should be much ahead of their, their expressive language. So they should be able to understand quite a bit. And if they're not, we're worried. If they're not doing imitative play, you know, they're not trying to wipe up the table as a parent does it. Um, they should be walking well. That toe walking is a concern. Um, by two, they should be using words together, not just single words, but putting words together. Um, they should be imitating, following commands. They should be able to push a toy that's on wheels. Um, we're also concerned if they do echolalia. So that's they take a phrase that they've heard usually from a movie um, or something that they really like, a, a song, and they repeat it over and over, but it's not appropriate. It's not um, back and forth communication. Uh, by three years, they should be able to walk stairs, and we're worried if they can't, if they're still falling a lot, um, if they can't build a tower of at least four blocks, if they can't manipulate smaller things, uh, with a pencil or crayon, they should be able to copy a circle. They should be doing make-believe play. So if they're not doing those things, we're worried. They need to be referred. Four years, they should be able to jump in place and, and pedal a trike. Right, you can, these are the concerns if they're not, but it means they should be too. They should be able to throw a ball over hand. No longer just grasping a pencil or crayon like this, but holding it with their finger and thumbs should be able to copy that circle. Uh, they should be using sentences now of three or more words. Um, they don't necessarily do um, pronouns correctly yet, though. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, this is where they say, she want to go, you know, it or, or me want to go, rather than I. 
I guess she was right. That was her one ago. Um, so if they're ignoring other children, they're not starting to play interactively. Uh, if we have big issues with them resisting toilet training, dressing, and sleeping, um, by five, if they seem sad or unhappy, we're concerned. If they don't want to play with other children, if by five they should be able to separate from the parents most of the time fairly easily, and if they still can't, there's that's a concern. Or if they're overly aggressive, overly fearful, overly timid, overly passive, all of those are things we want to look into farther. Um, if they by five they should be able to build a tower six to eight blocks um, without any trouble. At five, if they're easily distracted, they can't stay on task or concerned. Um, if they're not able to use plurals and past tense, and, you know, they're cute because they say, I goad rather than I went. So usually the um, those irregulars, are the they, they do them as if they're regular. So that's okay, but they're still using past tense. Uh, if they can't brush teeth, wash hands, or undress themselves. So screening tests at different ages um, for that newborn screening, we're really looking at metabolic diseases. And that's because these, if they're caught early and whatever substance they cannot metabolize is eliminated from the diet from infancy on, they do fine. If they get it, it does brain damage, which is not reversible. Um, so every time we see them, we're going to do vision and hearing. Uh, we want to at least do an assessment of iron deficiency, anemia. Um, are they pink? There are certain ages where we're, it's recommended to, to test for iron. Lead, asking about lead exposure. Again, there's certain ages, um, I think it's one and two, where they like to actually test everyone just in case. But we're worried about if they live in an old house that's got lead paint, especially if they've done anything that disturbed that paint, if they've done some construction or something where they got dust with the lead in it, some soil has lead. So if, you know, again, if they're living in an area where we're concerned that the soil could be contaminated, um, hypertension and hyperlipidemia. So when we do hearing screening, our goal is to catch anyone with hearing loss before six months of age. You've got to be able to hear to learn to speak. So if we can catch the hearing loss before they're really developing speech, they're gonna, they're not gonna get behind. Um, so any baby who's born should have a hearing test done before they leave the hospital. If it wasn't done, it should be done by the time they're one month old. And then the recommendation is four, five, six, eight, and 10 years. And those are typically done in, in school. Um, and then if there's any concern, we're going to do it, not just at those ages, but at that point. So if the parent has a concern and things like they have trouble hearing on the phone or they have trouble hearing people in a noisy background or they ask others to repeat themselves or they turn the TV up really loud, those are all things that are concerned and indicate doing more hearing tests or doing them at that point, not waiting for the next scheduled one. Vision screening. Um, on a brand new newborn, they should be able to focus on us. I use the term focus, our books use fixate, but when if you put your face there, they're not just staring off, they focus on you. Um, for that newborn, it's only 10 to 12 inches, right? They don't have good vision yet, so you've got to be pretty close, and they're not going to follow you uh, very far, but they'll follow you just a little bit, but realize once they lose you, you're gone. Um, by two months, they should be able to follow you much farther, 180 degrees. Again, when they lose you, you're gone. Um, and then about age three, we can start using the screening tools. And some of those, you can see there's the umbrella apple house, uh, there's the tumbling E's, um, and then there's ones with letters. The E or the, the Apple House, they have cards so the child can point at it if they don't have the words for those things, or you can give them an E and have them match what you point to. The tests are all designed to be done from 20 feet. If you cover one eye, don't have them close it because then that eye is going to be blurry. So cover it, read, cover the other one, and then do it together. 
color vision testing uh, is usually done at school age. Um, this is just an example of what the Ishiharas look like. You, if you're colorblind, you're not seeing the numbers in there, and if you're not, you are. Iron deficiency anemia. This is a problem with our toddlers who drink too much milk and don't get enough um, iron in their diet. So preterm babies are at risk because they didn't put on uh, that the iron stores that you develop during the third trimester. Even babies who go term, they use up the iron stores by about six months. And then, as I said, too much cow's milk. That's our typical one. Teenagers have that growth spurt. They need more iron, and they tend to have a poor diet at that age. During pregnancy, we've got the double whammy of needing more iron for the pregnancy and of being a teenager and typically of having a poor diet. If you've had blood loss, you need more iron, or kids who have a parasite infection. Um, they're losing small amounts of blood, and so they need it replaced. Lead screening, the biggest problem is lead paint, and lead was removed from the paint in 78, but if you are in an old house, um, that's a problem. And so the big problem is getting it in dust and inhaling it. So that can be from soil um, or from doing construction on lead paint. Lead pipes. Some old locations have lead pipes. Um, some pottery, uh, not pottery made in the U.S., but in other countries can use lead paint. Canned foods, again, not in the U.S., but from other countries. Certain toys and jewelry have lead paint, and so if a child's gnawing on it, that can be a problem. And then there are some folk remedies. We do want to allow people to, to use their cultural remedies, but we need to make sure they're safe, that they're not ones that have lead in them. Immunity. This is just de defining these terms, right? Immunity is the ability to destroy and remove a specific antigen from the body. So there's two ways you can get immunity. One is passive, and this is when we give you the antibodies. So this is produced when immunoglobulins from one person are given to another, um, right? We're giving you their antibodies against whatever you, usually this is after an exposure, um, or active immunity means we trigger your own immune system to make antibodies against it. So this is what um, our immunizations do. We give them something that looks similar to, it's the, the same protein as, or some of them are actually the virus but very weakened, and the body makes antibodies against it. So when you get exposed to the real thing, you can fight it off. So that leads us to vaccines. We do have the live attenuated vaccines. So that's a weakened, a real virus, but it's weakened. Those are the ones we have to be careful who we give them to. If you're immune suppressed, even that weakened virus could actually um, trigger disease. Or if you have someone in the household who's immune suppressed, if, if somebody's being treated for cancer in the household, we're going to hold off on the live viruses. That's our MMR and um, varicella. So there are some where it's killed. They were the real virus, but we've killed it. Some are toxoid. So it's um, what people have the big trouble from is not so much the germ as the, the toxic substance it releases. And so we're giving them something that looks similar to that without being the true um, substance. Uh, conjugate vaccines and recombinant, we're uh, changing them and then combining them. So those are like just protein, they're not the real thing. Okay, so contraindications for vaccines are very few. Only if you've had a true anaphylactic reaction to a vaccine or a component. And many of them are made in eggs, so that would be um, a, an allergy to eggs. Uh, as I said, MMR and varicella, if you're immunocompromised or pregnant or somebody in the household is immunocompromised. Uh, a child who is severely ill, we're going to delay giving them vaccines. But if they just have a mild illness, we can give them. Here's the immunization schedule. I used to um, have test questions on it. I am not going to ask that. I have never heard of anyone getting asked this on NCLEX. I really want you to know how to look it up if you ever need to do it. So California, um, 
bases it on the national recommendation from the CDC.